I am so glad you convinced me that the family car should be the Defender 110. It is so beautiful inside. It's so comfortable, and it just feels indestructible. Yes, it really is. I've been waiting a long time for the new model to come out. The Defender 110, I'm telling you, it's my favorite car of all times. It's my third one. You know, I have stories of going off-road. The guy managed the group. He was like, what are you doing in this beautiful car? I'm like, I'm going off-road. He's like, are you sure? Because you can use one of ours. And then they look like Mad Max cars. I'm like, no, 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 we're going to do this. And he was shocked. Wow. Well, it's great because the Defender has been reimagined for 21st century adventure and its unparalleled off-road ability as well as its robust interior are invaluable whether you're headed towards uncharted territory or just a weekend of exploration. The Defender 110 tackles challenging surroundings with absolute confidence. The SUV conveys strength outside and in featuring peerless technology like an intuitive driver display and an award-winning infotainment system. That's my favorite part, to keep you connected no matter where the journey takes you. Adventure is unique to everyone, and so is the Defender. Choose from the two-door Defender 90, the four-door Defender 110, or the larger Defender 130 with the ability to seat up to eight passengers. You'll find uncompromising performance in all three. So pack up and go even further with the Defender 110. Learn more at LandRoverUSA.com forward slash Defender. These days, we're all investors. Trying to be smart with our money despite our worst impulses. But at iShares, we believe that deep down inside of every investor is a better investor. One that's just waiting to be let out. Explore iShares ETFs and insights and let your best investor out. Visit iShares.com for more information. Don't let the mysteries of life scare you away. Instead, ask Altucher. Here's James Altucher. Claudia, we always talk about the importance of building connections, building relationships, and and that's how you bring real value to the world around you. And we have on the phone right now, Jason Gaynard. Jason, how are you doing? I'm excited. I'm I'm great. Thank you for asking. Jason, you just came out with the book. First off, let me just, before I describe your book, you are beyond a super connector. Way beyond. Like, we met you because you invited me to speak two years ago at your mastermind talks, I think it was the first one you you threw. It was, yeah. And um, you were just so prepared in every way for that. Like we did that kind of um, uh, Google Hangout or webinar beforehand. You you sent out letters to everybody. You sent out letters afterwards. Not you made sure that, everybody got I, introduced to each other. He sent me a personal. He sent me the wife of the talent because you. They're were not supposed to do thing. that. And he sent me a personalized video. So it made me feel really welcome and like I was a part of it, you know? So it it was so much work. I couldn't believe how much work he was putting in. And not only that, I was really impressed how, and this was different from other conferences I've been to, Jason didn't only select the speakers, but Jason, you also selected all the audience. Like the audience had to apply to go, and there were hundreds of people in the audience. Yes, yeah, no, for our first event, we had 4,200 entrepreneurs apply. Did you talk to all of them? No, so how we did it? Well, I was I was overwhelmed by the, the <laughs> that entire application process. I I did go through every single application one by one and had to do research on a lot of those people to see if what they said in their application was true, kind of cross referencing with their LinkedIn profile and stuff like that. And then those who I thought were the right fit, I'd send them an invitation. And when they secured a spot, then I would hold a phone call with them. Wow. And in that phone call, I would either allow them to come to the event or I'd refund their ticket. But let me ask you, Jason, you say in the book that you were broke in 2012. And however, you managed to get 4,500 applications for your first talk. How did you do that? And, and, and I just want to say the book is titled Mastermind Dinners, Build Lifelong Relationships by Connecting Experts, Influencers, and Lynchpins. And it's a great book. A great but book. yes, 
How did you get 45 applications for your first 4, conference? 4,500. 4,500. <laughs> uh, well, first, I got to give a, a thank you for to Clay A. Bear, who is somebody you interviewed. He actually gave me that title and that subtitle right early on in the, the book writing process. And I just <laughs> decided to send it right to print with that title. But uh, See, that's a super connector. See how he's mentioned well, well, people? Well, not only that, <laughs> I just want to add, from that mastermind dinner, I became good friends. We've both become good friends with so many people who we didn't know beforehand. Yeah. Like... Mm-hmm. Um, I have a full mastermind group of women. Yeah, and <laughs> Joey Coleman, Jim Shields, Clay Bear, uh, uh, a- AJ. I know AJ is AJ. Uh, AJ. AJ. We met he's at the like, conference. He's like my cousin. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're cousins now. <laughs> So yeah. we met so many people at that first conference, um, both in the audience and the other speakers. Uh, it was great. How did you go from bro to getting this attention, Jason? What did you do? Well, I mean, I so how it happened was uh, I was in that one business and I got out of it. Unfortunately, I landed a quarter million dollars in debt. Didn't know what I was going to do next. And I actually used uh, both your philosophy around idea generation. I talk about that a lot. I mean, it really was uh, a huge factor in, into me kind of turning things around. Jason, and- we're going to call you on it again. You're you're you're, <laughs> you're super connecting again, mentioning <laughs> mentioning Claudia and me and our idea of idea I- generation. And- it's good. All right, keep I, going. I, I can't help it. Honestly, it was incredibly impactful. But I, uh, so what happened was I, I had an opportunity to go see Seth Godin in, in New York. Somebody gave me a ticket. They posted it on Facebook, and I had no other obligations at the time. So I jumped at the opportunity. And when I went to this, I didn't know what it was about. Um, but it, the, the philosophy was a connection economy and how there's huge value connecting like minded individuals. And at the time, I thought there's no group as disconnected as entrepreneurs. So I started doing these things called mastermind dinners, which was how the book kind of came to be. And I uh, held a dinner with six to eight entrepreneurs who I didn't know, but I thought should know each other. And the first one dinner I did, I almost canceled two hours prior because I'm like, nobody's going to see value in this. They're going to think I wasted their time. I had all those fears that built up. And uh, during that first dinner, I lost track of time. And the first dinner lasted four and a half hours. The conversation did skip a beat. And I just became clear that connecting people was something I want to do to some capacity for the rest of my life, not necessarily as a business because our first dinner, I, on none of our dinners I've ever monetized. I paid for them out of pocket. And at the time, I had very little access to credit left. I was a quarter million dollars in debt and I didn't know, you know, I had no cash flow coming in whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I was, I was considering bankruptcy. That was, that was an option. I didn't know where rock bottom was for me. And I, I said to myself, the bank could take my car. They could take whatever measly assets I've left, but they can't take my relationships. So I kept on doing these dinners. And then a few months later, I had an opportunity to do an, uh, an event with Tim Ferriss. And Tim's somebody I've known for probably three, four years now. And he had a book coming out called The Four Hour Chef and had these book bundles that if you bought, I don't, you probably know his book, uh, Four Hour Chef, was banned from all the Barnes and Noble bookstores. And Tim, being one of the best book marketers I know, uh, <laughs> yeah. two, two weeks out, created, created these book bundles that if you bought five books, he'd give you these bonus, if you, bonuses. If you bought 50 books, maybe he'd do a webinar with you. And he had this Hail Mary package that if you bought 4,000 books, he would do two speaking engagements. And at the time, I'm like, I, I thought of a friend of mine who puts on these huge entrepreneurial events. I thought this was a great opportunity for him because Tim doesn't speak that often. But the minute I click send on that email, I said, you know what? This is a great opportunity for anybody. So I actually emailed Tim directly and I said, I'll take the packages. The package was $84,000. And I didn't, I didn't have $84,000, but I had to raise that money for the first time. I've never raised money before my last business, which was a seven, eight million dollar business. Um, I built purely on credit cards. So I was raised that you never ask anything from, from anybody. You don't ask for handouts, but, uh, I had to kind of overcome that fear rather quickly because I had to raise that money. And I extended to Tim that I was, I was going to buy those books. And thankfully I reached out to three people and, and two of the three people gave me the money right away. Um, how, how did you, how did you ask them? Like, who, what was the reason you, you, they gave you the money? Well, I mean, looking back, I mean, it, it was, uh, <laughs> it makes no sense why they gave me the money. Cause I was, you know, I was in survival mode. I was a quarter million dollars in debt. This was a business idea that was only a few hours old. I mean, Tim posted that blog post at four in the morning, my time, and I pulled the trigger on it by six in the morning and Tim actually replied to it before he went to sleep. So I had to raise that money. Pretty much right away. And I actually, the person who I took the money, the, the first person wanted to actually see the numbers. He's a number driven guy. And I said, I don't have time to deal with numbers now. <laughs> I'm going to move to the next person. The second person uh, said, yes, I'll, I'll lend you the money, but I'd like to talk about like a business venture. 
And then the third person's just said, I'll give you the money straight out. No questions, no no strings attached. We'll talk about it later. I would well, say the third person probably knew you very well because, uh, I mean, you exude integrity. Like, that. that's one thing. You know, if you say something, I'm like, oh, Jason says, that's <laughs> it. That's the law. We're doing that. Well, it's, I, it's- yeah, I mean, I asked them afterwards and I said, why? I, I, just a couple months later, I said, well, why did you give me the money? Because now looking at Mastermind Talks, it's a big su- success and it makes sense. But back then it didn't. And he said, I wasn't investing in the business. I was investing in you. And to me, it became clear that when you hit rock bottom in life, you'll be left with two things. One is your word and the integrity of your word, which you just kind of touched on. And the second thing is your network uh, right. or your relationships. Um, now, that- let me ask you, Jason. I send emails to Tim Ferriss. I send emails to a lot <laughs> of famous people. They never reply to me. But you have a trick about how to do it uh, with the subject line, which I've been trying. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I, I mean, I uh, so there's there's different ways. I mean, there's there's a great saying uh, in one of my favorite books, Twenty Two Immutable Laws of Marketing, which is what works in mark what works in the military works in marketing, and that's the unexpected. So I do stuff like audio recordings uh, for for emails. I'll do video recordings for emails, um, and also yeah, the subject title. I try to make something that is not too common. Instead of saying, "Hey, I need your help with something," I'll I'll have an open ended. Um, Kind of subject line in the in the copywriting space the 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 rule of thumb is every word is designed to lead you to the next word and every sentence is designed to lead you to the next sentence so I kind of take the same philosophy I guess when it comes to to emails but uh, I do try to go over and above when it comes to those kind of things with doing video emails and audio emails and stuff like that as well that that people enjoy what's the exam what's some examples of some subject lines that have really worked for you. Uh, so I talk about it a little bit in the book, uh, in the context of dinners when reaching out to certain individuals. Um, I mean, one thing is, is always, I mean, social proof is that's the only reason I, I, I talk about it, uh, in the book as well. Like when I first started doing these dinners, I was lucky if I got like a 5% response rate, nobody would come to these dinners hardly <laughs> originally. And I get some people canceling and stuff like that. And conversely, the dinner that I did in New York with you guys, I reached out to 34 people and 33 uh, showed up at the at the dinner. Yeah, we uh, were there. The, yeah. only wow. pers- the only person who wasn't able to make it was Ramit Sethi. Uh, so, um, I mean, that's completely you know, night and day difference. And I, I really attribute that to, to putting in the work and social proof over time. So I apply that uh, as well into if I'm trying to – if I somebody I don't know, I usually don't reach out to people cold, cold anymore. I don't – feel like I, I, I need to. And I'm not in a position either where I'm trying to build a larger network. I'm much, I mean, the people I have in my network right now or the relationships I have, I'm in a much better position to go deep with those relationships instead of expanding. I'm all really more about depth instead of breadth. So, James has uh, said that you are two degrees of separation from anyone anywhere. Is that true? That is a very kind blurb for my book. I do appreciate it. But uh, I don't know if I'd say that, but I mean, you look, it, it's incredible. I mean, every time... You know, anytime I want to, uh, and I think we all have this, we just, again, we're always looking for more people in our network and, and that kind of stuff and to connect with more people. But I mean, it, every time I've ever really needed something and I've kind of thrown a Hail Mary on Facebook or on Twitter asking if anybody knows a specific individual. I mean, I've had introductions to former astronauts and big name entrepreneurs and stuff wow. like that. I'm very blessed. And again, I, it's one of those things like I always feel like I need to kind of have more people in my network and that kind of stuff. But every time I look back at the people that are already in it. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Dunbar's number, the whole 150, right? If you have 150 right. amazing people in your network, you really don't need too, too much more. Um, so again, I'm all, I'm, I'm really in a position where I'm trying to go deeper with those relationships. Uh, so instead Jason, of acting more. you've been doing this for not that long, really. And you have an amazing network. Everybody knows who you are. Everybody loves you. And you know, everyone wants to go to your dinners. Uh, I'm secretly wanting to do things with you all the time. And I'm <laughs> sure everyone else is. But my question is, are you actually making money from these? So the dinners, no, um, no. Well, I mean, not directly per se. I mean, I, in my last business, I had an e-commerce business, and I, I wouldn't bat an eye at at spending fifteen, twenty five thousand dollars on marketing with no guaranteed return. Um, when you know these dinners, they cost me on average between six hundred to a thousand dollars to host, um, depending on on the group size. But you know, for ten thousand dollars, I can do dinners with. 
125 amazing individuals and just build incredible an incredible network. And the reason why people don't often invest in their network is they can't peg an ROI to it. It's hard to say, you know, connecting with a James Altucher will do this for my bottom line. And that's not why you do it. But the funny thing I always like to point back to is, and this was really the game changer for me, is I actually attended an event three, four years ago that Tim Ferriss put on. And it was called Opening the Kimono. And it was geared towards uh, best-selling authors and how to become a New York Times best-selling author. And I never had the intention of ever becoming an author, oddly enough. Now I have the book coming out. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, it was $10,000 to go for two days. And I told myself at the time, like at a $10,000 $10, price point, there's bound to be some interesting people there. And I was right. I mean, that's where I connected with Tucker Max and Ryan and Tim and uh, Joey. That's where I met Joey. I mean, all these amazing, amazing individuals. And at the time, you know, if somebody asked me right after the event, it cost me 10 grand to go. If they asked me the following week, did you get $10,000 worth of value? The answer was no. I couldn't honestly say that. But I just had this gut feeling in my heart of hearts that it was worth going and connecting with these people and building relationships with them uh, would, would just be a smart move to do. And you look at the first Mastermind Talks event, five of the speakers who spoke on stage out of the 15 were from that event three years prior wow. that I went to. We had five or six attendees who paid $3,000 to be there. And I had two people, Joey and Chris Plow, uh, who signed up for my $20,000 a year uh, retreat program. So if you- well, take- what, what, What's that? What's the retreat program? So we just uh, decided to do these quarterly retreats. Uh, for an intimate group of individuals, and basically, um, I love this idea. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, so there, there are three day retreats. The first day is an experience day. Uh, the second day is a uh, is like um, a, a learning kind of mastermind day. Uh, sorry, the second day is a mastermind day where we deep dive into everybody's business issues and that kind of stuff. And the third day is a learning day. So, for example. We've done for the experience days. We've done a behind the scenes tour of Apple. We sat down with the CEO of Match.com. Wow. Uh, we've done a behind the scenes tour of Silk Soleil uh, and Aria Casino in Vegas. So we've had some really, really incredible experiences. How, how did you arrange those behind the scenes uh, things? Uh, different ways. So again, comes down to network. I mean, the, the one at Apple was just perfect, perfect timing. We were one of five groups in the last 10 years that were not Apple employees to go through this little workshop. Uh, and it was done at the Apple campus in Cupertino um, at Apple University. And the guy who was running it was a senior VP of Apple University. And it was his last day on the job. He was there for 11 years. And he could get fired <laughs> for having an outside group participate wow. in this. But he's like, it's my last day. It's not a big deal. So it was a perfect timing. And I actually got connected to him through a friend of mine um, who worked at Apple for 10 years. And I never thought I could pull the strings to make that happen, but it worked out. Uh, so, so, so what did you do? Did you kind of like spread the message you want, like your friend responded to this message you wanted an interesting behind the scenes experience? Or how did he know to connect you for this one event? Yeah. Like I, I'm always, I'm always interested in how messages, uh, work their way through a network. Sure. Yeah. No, I think that, so that's actually a great example. I forgot about it, but that's a great example of just posting that out to my network and asking for help. Uh, I had basically, I was probably three weeks out of this retreat and that's, I, I usually like to have these things planned out far, far in advance. And, uh, I posted, I said, we're doing a retreat in San Francisco. I'm looking to do some kind of experience. We had the social proof of doing something with Silk to Soleil and with Aria Casino in Vegas. So that helped a lot as well. Um, and then I really kind of sh- showcased the people in the group. And, um, I said, if anybody knows of any cool experiences, let me know. I'd, I'd love to make something work. And, uh, one of the guys who I didn't, I barely, barely knew. Uh, but he ended up pulling some strings for me and, and, uh, and made it happen. And we've be- become very good friends since. And have, has anybody in the retreats, uh, have they, have you seen them benefit now from, from these retreats and these behind the scenes experiences? Oh, yeah, tremendously. I mean, the, the experience, like the one we did at Aria Casino, originally when we were doing one in Vegas, we were going to do a tour of Zappos, like an intimate tour of Zappos with Tony Shea. And I mean, they, uh, Tony was away and he, they have 1600 employees, but I was talking to the lady at the casino and I said, listen, I'm like, uh, we were trying to book our rooms. And I said, how many employees do you guys have at your casino? I'm, I'm just curious to know. And uh, at the one property, Aria Casino, they have 10,000 employees. Mm. And I'm like, how do you keep 10,000 employees motivated? You know, front facing, a lot of these front facing employees, and uh, so we did an amazing behind the scenes tour there. And that's actually 
um, we met the – in that tour, we met the security, the head of security for MGM and Aria Casino. And then um, at the end of the retreat, I asked the people in the, in the group, I said, you know, looking for – I'm going to start picking speakers for Mastermind Talks next year. Who would you like to see speak? And three of the people in the group wanted to see the surveillance guy. And I'm like, they won't, they, they, they won't be able to do it because of, you know, technicalities and legalities and stuff like that. But we had him speak at last year's Mastermind Talks event and it was, uh, it was fantastic. That's so great. yeah, no, they, I mean, the people in the group get tremendous value from it. Um, oftentimes from a personal perspective, because that's really what we focus on. Because I mean, as entrepreneurs, nobody's telling you or nobody's asking you to, you know, press pause on your life, right? It's go, go, go. And sometimes you just need to pause and reflect. And that's, we just, we want to give entrepreneurs some space. Um, And that's really what the retreats are for. And if somebody wanted to join one of those retreats, it's not that easy or can they, what would they (laughs) have to do? So, I mean, I guess if you look at Mastermind Talks, the event, we had 4,200 people condensed into a group of 150 the day of the event. Uh, and our retreats is a hand select. Actually, I, uh, you were there at the first event. We had 72 people apply for our retreat program mm-hmm. and we only had 15 spots. Right. So out of like the cream of the crop, we had to pick 15 of those 72 uh, to be in our retreat program. But uh, I'm actually they, – they don't know this yet, so I'm breaking this to the world. Oh, uh, breaking I'm, news. I'm, I'm actually not going to do the retreats anymore. They've been incredible, uh, but I'm very aware that I can put on a world-class conference and that's what – I'm best at. Ah. So I'm going to focus all my energy on mastermind talks in the future um, because these retreats are like mini events, but uh, I'm doing mastermind talks and I'm also beginning to do a, a spouse retreat event um, in the future, which I'm really excited about. So, and so, so, so you're going to put on these mastermind conferences um, and there's a good profit. Usually I find companies that put on conferences don't make a good margin on them. They, they put on conferences as, as loss leaders to set up, sell other products. Sure. Yeah. And that's, that's the traditional model. I mean, I have a friend of mine that the, you know, the, the space they're in, they run the biggest events in Canada and their customers are the sponsors. Visa will come on board and say, we want to do an event. We need 1200 entrepreneurs in, in seats and you go find them and they'll sell tickets for that. But their job really is, is to cater to the sponsor. We're very different. And, and thankfully, just given our model, I was, I, I, again, I didn't have any money when I was doing the first Mastermind Talks event. Um, as you know, I don't pay any of the speakers. I mean, the, the deal with Tim was the only deal I ever had with anybody. And, and since then, there's been a strong precedent. We don't pay anything. We'll buy people's books and stuff like that, but we won't, uh, we don't pay for speakers. And in the event space, the majority of your, your revenues go towards speaker fees, right? You'll, you'll pay, right. you know, uh, you know, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in speaker fees. Instead, we have a twenty five thousand dollar prize. So that frees up a lot of capital in that sense. And given the price point of our events as well, I mean this this event we just sold out this morning. I posted it to Facebook. Uh we're ninety eight days away from our next event. We just sold out. And uh but it's it's five to six thousand dollars to attend. Right. So it's a premium, premium event. With that said, we don't have any sponsors and if we can crack the sponsorship nut then maybe, you know, we'll even be even more profitable, but we're still very, very profitable given our model. Yeah. $5,000 uh, and you sell out like how many people attend? Uh, this next event will be 130. And I have it's to incredible. say the events are amazing. I saw the interaction when I was there. No one is left behind. No one gets to <laughs> hide in a corner. Everyone is involved. It was unbelievable. I got so much out of it. It was incredible. Starting with new relationships of people who support me now and, you know, tell me yes. Yeah, no, uh, we still keep in touch with, I mean, that was a year and over a year in Africa. We still keep in touch with many of the people from that event. You know, here's an idea, Jason. You're so good at it. Like, I'm not that good at it. Uh, but we would, we always like the idea of having a dinner in New York of uh, interesting people and creatives and entrepreneurs. Cause I think there's not enough mixture between creatives and let's, and let's say tech and other kinds of entrepreneurs. Sure. And s- someone like us should hire someone like you to organize the <laughs> dinner. That's another business line for you. Yeah, I mean, opportunities are definitely abundant and it's hard to kind of <laughs> stay on track. But, uh, yeah, no, that is definitely, a, I, I know you're, you've probably been idea generating for me, uh, every <laughs> once in a while. So, um, but yeah, no, I'll definitely consider that. <laughs> what's, uh, what's next? So you're going to do this event coming up in, in a hundred days. What's after that? 
Honestly, I mean, I live my life one mastermind talks event at a time. Like I, I posted on Facebook this morning, we just sold out. And now this is when the work truly begins. I, I, you know, raising the bar year over year is a terrifying proposition. I mean, because the first event went so well, there was a ton of pressure on the second event. And this third event, I actually almost canceled in uh, July. We already pre-sold $150,000 in tickets. And I almost canceled it because I wasn't 100% confident I could raise the bar. What, what, uh, what, what does it mean, raise the bar? Like, what are you going to do in this event that raises the bar? Um, I mean, there's there's a couple things. I mean, uh, year over year, one of the things that really kind of raises the bar is we increase the quality of people in attendance. That's how we scale the event. Usually when you have a sex- successful event, conventional wisdom is, you know, have double the, the people or do multiple events. And to me, just something like this. Again, when there's such a focus on community, um, we don't want to scale it that way. Instead, we want better quality people. That is such here. an important yeah. key. And Amazing. I think I think people do not realize that, that no. that's how you actually increase the network, not by increasing the size, but increasing the quality. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, we have some phenomenal people uh, on board this year. Tucker will be there this year. Uh, Tim is there again. Uh, we have just some amazing, amazing people. I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful to be able to put all these people in a room and that's where the value is. So it doesn't matter where, if, if anything, we're, we're changing it up in the sense that we're moving away from speakers speaking from the stage and m- leveraging more the people in the room. Uh, wow. the wisdom of the people in the room because there's so many brilliant people. So as you know, we do those round tables, which are the highest rated aspect of our events. Um, so it, it's more like that. But again, kind of sign uh, somewhat along the same lines of our retreats. It's really the reason we're doing it in Napa Valley. I mean, Napa Valley is beautiful. It's significantly more expensive for us to host it in Napa Valley, but it's a setting that takes people away from the busyness of their day-to-day lives. So if we do it in San Francisco and you're flying in from New York, it's just another busy city. So we want people to disconnect so that they can really kind of create genuine connections with with other attendees and stuff like that. So it's giving them more space. That's the 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 toughest part is there's an elegance in removing things but increasing the 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 value. So and, so so you know not everybody will of course go to one of your events and not everyone's going to throw a conference, but let's say someone wants to throw a good dinner, uh, a good networking dinner of, you know, entrepreneurs or interesting people or whatever. What what are some tips that they should do? Yeah, so I think one of the the biggest factors um, is uh, well, one 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 philosophy is uncommon commonalities. Uh, there has to be some kind of unifying commonality amongst everybody at the dinner table. Could be that they're all entrepreneurs. Could be that they're all artists. Um, could be that they're all in the top one percent of their craft. Um, but there has to be some kind of un, like uncommon commonality that they all share. And you don't want people at, at too far the extremes. You don't want people who are all startups and then have somebody there with hundred million dollar business because it just it's too big of a gap. Um, but there is value in just connecting people who are just amazing people. Like my the the process I use to select people for mastermind talks is not based on how big their business is or what their online resume says. Is at the end of every phone call, if I don't know them personally already or intimately, I ask myself, would I want to have dinner with this person? So amazing people are really the people I, I, I bring into a mastermind talks event. And the same thing with a dinner. I, I try to have no, no duds <laughs> to a yeah. certain degree. So and it and ha- shows, it shows. I mean, I remember the last dinner, um, James was ne- next to AJ and it was impossible to break the barrier around them. <laughs> I, I, like they, they just sort of went into the AJ James energy situation. It was, <laughs> they loved each other. Yeah, no, and that, and that, that's one thing I did at that dinner was, uh, seating arrangements. Um, like I don't want to leave this, like at Mastermind Talks, which is a little unconventional, we assign seating for three or four times during the, the entire event. So I know everybody on, t- on an intimate level. So I'll sit somebody who's struggling with culture in their business next to somebody who's world class in culture in theirs. That's um, amazing how much thought you put into it, Jason. Yeah. That's, and- it's incredible. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, a great example of that is actually at our last event, we had Ryan Holiday there and he's from Austin and there's another gentleman named Aubrey Marcus who has a company called On It. Um, and he's from Austin as well. And I just, I just had in my, I had a gut feeling these two guys should know each other. And obviously Ryan used to work with Robert Green and Aubrey Marcus is a huge fan of, of, uh, Robert Green. And, uh, since they met at the event, they've become friends and Ryan was at his big opening of his new gym and stuff like that. So that to me is what, that's my biggest payoff. 
payoff. When I see people connect and I see those relationships going like you and you and AJ, I mean, to me, that's that's the biggest payoff of all time. Well, that's great, Jason. I'm really glad uh, you joined us here for Ask Altitude, but I do encourage everybody to get the full, complete story by buying your book, Mastermind Dinners, Build Lifelong Relationships by Connecting Experts, Influencers, and Lynchpins. I'm a blurb on the book, so very happy to be so. <laughs> and and, I, and I'm very happy that I participated in your first event. I'm, I'm glad things are going well. Yes. Yeah, and I, I, I'm incredibly grateful you took that leap of faith for the first event. I really am. So thank you for having me on the show, and, and thank you for supporting me with Mastermind Talks. Thank you, Jason. And we'll, we'll, we'll see you at a dinner soon, I'm sure. Oh, you will, definitely. <laughs> okay, bye, Jason. Bye, bye. bye. See you guys. Now that's what we call done. Visit StansberryRadioChooseYourself.com to download our free report called The Choose Yourself Stories and check back daily for more Ask Altiger. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power, so how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, and of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash advance. That's oracle.com slash advance. oracle.com slash advance.